So my dear children, in the earlier chapters, we discussed several things related to the food preservation process. So we discussed about the traditional methods and we discussed about the, uh, you know, like uh, modern methods. Now, traditionally we use several methods, but however, when you take the modern methods, they are also originated from those traditional methods. But however, th those things are somewhat efficient than the traditional methods the modern, modern methods. So, no matter how or what process we follow in order to preserve food, always my dear children, right, uh, mainly we are inhibiting the growth of microorganisms or else we reduce the factors which are essential for the growth of microorganisms. So that's how we preserve food in mainly. So now we are going to discuss about in each of the methods that we have already discussed, like when you take the modern methods or traditional methods, whatever, like what kind of a thing or what is the reason? What is the reason in which we can preserve food? by doing those kind of processes or those by following those kinds of methods i mean like why do we oh how can we preserve food by doing drying or by drying something how we can preserve food what's the process which is going to occur over there by increasing the concentration how we can preserve food what kind of a thing is going to occur in there how does the growth of microorganisms are going to reduce? So we'll be discussing about these things and we'll be focusing about these things mainly within this chapter. So you are given with a table. Let's head on to see the table, my dear children. So various preservation methods and reasons are given within this table. Like I said in the earlier, here we are mainly focusing why this thing is going to pres preserve or why the food item is getting preserved upon doing these kind of stuffs right when you follow these methods or when you uh, dry something why we can save that food or why we can preserve that food when you add salt into it how we can preserve food so we'll be mainly focusing about the reason behind doing these things actually not doing the reason behind the preservation process, okay? Reason behind the preservation process. Why it is getting preserved? So let's head on to see the first one, first of all. So you know that the drying process. So upon drying, my dear children, we already know that drying means we are going to remove the presence of water. So water is a good factor right water is an essential factor for the growth of microorganisms and we already discussed that the growth of microorganisms is the main reason behind right that's the main and foremost reason behind the spoilage of food so if you can reduce the growth of microorganisms if you can reduce the number of microorganisms which are going to act on the food we can preserve that food item so in order to press in order to do that by drying right in order to do that my dear children we have to reduce the factors which are essential for the growth of microorganisms so by drying what we do what we are going to do is we are going to reduce the water or moisture level within the food so water or moisture is an important factor for the growth of microorganisms so upon drying, you know that the level of water or the moisture level is getting reduced gradually. By that way, right, an environment is getting created which are not favorable for the growth of microorganisms and which are not favorable for the presence of microorganisms. So automatically, the growth or the presence of microorganisms will be reduced so by that way we can preserve food so it is given here you can see it very clearly microorganisms do not grow on food due to removal of water so water is a 
important factor. If you can remove water up to certain level, if you can reduce the water, amount of water up to a certain level, then my dear children, you can preserve that food item. Especially we do drying for the fish and meat. And you know like when you take fruits like lime and uh, mainly if you take, you know like grain items like rice, okay? And chilies also, we do this drying thing. So upon drying, my dear children, what happens? We reduce the amount of water and by that way, what we are going to do is we are going to inhibit the growth of microorganisms, okay? We are going to inhibit the growth of microorganisms by the reduction of water. So water is an important factor for the growth of microorganisms. You remember it. Next one. Control of temperature, freezing and defreezing. So my dear children, in here, we are controlling another factor which is favorable for the microorganisms. Right? We are controlling another factor which is favorable for the growth of microorganisms. So this factor is the optimum temperature or the room temperature. Normally, microorganisms are growing under the room temperature. Okay? A good temperature is pretty much important factor for the growth of microorganisms. So, the, so our room temperature around our environment, the normal temperature is a good factor for the growth of microorganisms. So moisture and the normal temperature, right, around our environment. Those are the two main factors which are pretty much essential for the growth of microorganisms. So if you can control these factors, so by that way, you can save or you can preserve food. So in the earlier case, we reduce the amount of water in the food item. Now in this case, when you are freezing or defreezing, we can save food by reduction or by the, uh, you know, like by avoiding the optimum temperature for the growth of microorganisms. So we can reduce the temperature. You know that when you take a refrigerator, when you keep food items in a refrigerator, refrigerator right? like vegetables, fruits, the spoilage is getting reduced up to somewhat, okay? I mean like we can't keep it forever. But however, we can preserve that food item for about uh, two to three days, right? For about two to three days, we can preserve that food item. It's not going to, but however, when you take like week or two, it's going to spoil, however, but still, you know, like if you keep the normal vegetables and fruits in normal environmental conditions, then it will spoil within two to the, two, within a, you know, like two three days. But however, if you keep the same food item within a refrigerator, right? When you freeze it, you can keep it for about keep it for about uh, five to six days, maybe like weeks. Okay. So there are different fruit fruit items, fruits. Okay, uh, that can be kept for about uh, you know like one or two weeks if you keep it in refrigerator but however if you expose to the normal environmental conditions right definitely those fruit items will definitely uh, definitely those fruit items will spoil within three to four days my dear children it's because of the environmental conditions upon the environmental conditions my dear children the, my dear children, the main factors are the optimum temperature which is the room temperature and the moisture level. So you know that our environment has moisture, which is water vapor, right? Our environment have, has plenty of water vapor. So the moisture is plenty available in our environment. And the second factor is the temperature. So optimum, uh, when there is optimum temperature also within in our environment, the microorganisms will grow rapidly. So rapid growth of microorganisms mean, means rapid spoilage okay so my dear children by controlling these two factors we can control the right spoilage or the or the food item can be preserved very well so here when you freeze and defreeze 
we change or we reduce the temperature. So by the reduction of temperature, microorganisms will not be able to grow as they need. So in that case, okay, in that case, what will happen here is the food item is getting preserved because of the because of the my because the microorganisms are not growing. Okay, because the microorganisms are not growing. So by defreezing and freezing processes, right? Oh, when you follow defreezing and freezing processes, what will happen here is we reduce the temperature in order to preserve food. Okay, we are not giving the factor. The optimum temperature factor is not given for the microorganisms. By that way, we preserve the food item. So here it is given that the control of the growth of microorganisms due to a favorable temperature for their growth is not available. So here, the growth of microorganisms will not happen because my dear children but because of there is no favorable temperature for the growth right microorganisms they do not have a favorable temperature in here so therefore microorganisms will definitely not grow okay so this is the reason behind preservation of food upon freezing and defreezing Right, then we'll move on to see the next one. Concentration, increase in concentration and immersion in honey. Increase in concentration or else immersion in honey. So, let me give you a brief idea about what do you mean by the concentration. Concentration means the number of particles contained within unit volume. Okay number of particles contained within unit volume will take a fruit juice okay will take a fruit juice so if you take a fruit juice my dear children let's take a lime juice which you prepared at your home so you add lime and you add water and you mix it very well then finally once again uh, according to our taste you add some amount of salt and again sugar then you you know like freeze it for about some time right and then if you want you can add some ice cubes also then you prepare your drink this is how a usual lime drink or lime juice is being made but however can you keep that lime juice for about two to three days even if you keep that thing in a refrigerator you can keep it for two to, two to three days, but however, the taste is getting somewhat different. Okay, even though, even though you kept those things within the refrigerator, even though the growth of microorganisms uh, will not occur properly, right? However, there are some certain microorganisms that is going to act within, the, within that liquid. So after two or three days, definitely you won't be able to consume that thing. A normal fruit juice that you prepare at your home, my dear children. I'm just talking about that thing. Okay. But however, if you take, you know, high concentrated, high concentrated fruit juice. Here high concentration means they are not adding water. Actually, they are adding water, but the amount of water contained within that sample or the amount of water which is contained within that juice, concentrated juice, is very less. I mean, like it's not countable even. Okay, it's very less, pretty much less. So here, when I am speaking about the concentration, now you can come into a conclusion. Ah, here now they are reducing the amount of water. So if there is no water in it, definitely the food item will be preserved. Because if there is no water, 
microorganisms will not be able to grow. But however, at your home, when you prepare a juice, you add water, you, know? you add more water but less amount of juice. So there is a problem. More water, less amount of juice. So there is a problem in that case. Okay. So in that case, my dear children, we can consume that juice, right? Only for about few days. But however, within this one, right, within concentrated juices, right, you can take that juice or you can take that bottle whenever you need. These can be kept for a long, long time, right? Like for years. And, uh, you know, like to preserve these things, we add several additives, additives and several, uh, you know, preservatives. But however, most of the times, if you can inc if you can increase the concentration level, you also can prepare these kinds of concentrated drinks, which can be kept for about longer time within your home. Only thing that you need to do is you have to reduce the amount of water level. That's it. Definitely, you have to reduce the amount of water level. Okay. So if you take honey. Honey is not going to sp uh, spoil, no. Honey, there is no expiration date for honey. Right? Why is that? It's because that honey is mainly made up with, or oh, honey is mainly formed with a, a sugar solution that has very less, very, very less amount of water. Okay? So the spoilage is getting definitely reduced. Actually, if you find out about if you find out more thing relate more things related to honey you may find that honey doesn't have an expiry date right you can consume bee honey whenever you want there is no expiry date there is no certain expiry date if you preserve that thing i mean like there can be there can be several you know complications I mean, like uh, when you take a bottle of honey, if you expose it to normal environment, if you add water, if you do any kind of uh, any kind of other uh, unfavorable things, then there might be other complications within the taste or uh, you know, like uh, the structure, appearance, and those things may change. Okay, but however, if you store it very well, right? If you protect it very well, if you store it very well, then you can keep it for about you know, like there is no certain time period. Right? There's no certain time period. We can keep it for about very long time. Right? Bee honey. It's because it carries very less amount of water. So upon increasing the concentration, my dear children, here also we reduce the amount of water. So we can't do it these things at home, my dear children. Especially, it's not enough to reduce the concentrate. It's not enough to reduce the water level, but you have to add some additives as well. So there are preservatives and additives that we need to add in these cases. Okay. Otherwise, there, is, there can be some complications. Right. So here the concentration in by increasing the concentration also, what we are going to do is we are going to decrease the amount of water, the volume of water contained within the fruit juice or whatever the food item, right? And we are controlling the growth of microorganisms. So see, the control of growth of microorganisms due to removal of water. So upon concentration and dipping in honey, both the things works as the same, right? So here you can see growth of microorganisms due to removal of water, due to removal of water, right? Water is getting removed here. Or oh, very less amount of water can be observed within the food item. When you are increasing the concentration. Concentration means the number of particles. So if there are more particles, then there can be less amount of water. Right? If there are more fruit juice particles, then there are less amount of water. No? So if the amount, water amount is very less, what will happen? The food is getting preserved. When you dip it in honey also, the same process can be observed. 
when you depict it honey the food item will not be able to receive water or receive moisture from the environment in that case also we reduce the amount of water obtained by the certain food item so here also the food is getting preserved with the help of reduction of water okay reduction of water so here it is given once again in uh, so here due to removal of water in food and destruction of microorganisms due to removal of water from them so by the reduction of water we destroy the microorganisms right we can destroy the microorganisms we can even destroy the uh, microorganisms and also we inhibit the growth of microorganisms as well okay so these food items can be kept for about longer time if you add additives like uh, when you take fruit juices concentrated fruit juices right uh, they the commercial uh, you know like commercial companies they add several additives and preservatives in order to keep these things for a very long time so you we can keep these things for about years okay you can keep these things for about few years and if you take these concentrated food items which are to be sold within the commercial markets okay right then we'll see the next process next process is given smoking smoking so here smoking means we take the food item and uh, we supply smoke by using a uh, so by using a hearth okay it can be a wooden hearth or sawdust or we can use any other biomass okay so mainly we are using wood or sawdust so by that way the hearth is getting uh, hearth is ignited or the oven is ignited and we allow smoke to hit on the food items okay the smoke which is getting emitted from the hearth or from the iron we allow that smoke to hit on the certain food item especially we are using this technology or we are using this method in order to dry out fish and meat right in order to dry out fish and meat right there are other applications as well we can apply these things to other food items as well well but however mainly we are drying or we mainly we are smoking uh, you know like fresh meat and fish okay so here upon smoking my dear children once again we are reducing the amount of water okay once again we are reducing the amount of water okay so here when you smoke you know that we keep it we keep the food item okay above a hearth no or an oven so the smoke which is coming out from the oven or from the hearth has some amount of a temperature okay it has some amount of a temperature a temperature somewhat greater than our room temperature so when the smoke is going to come out the water within the food item is definitely going to evaporate as the temperature is somewhat greater than the normal room temperature okay so when you smoke it for about few hours what will happen we can remove water within the food up to a great extent so upon the removal of water my dear children you know that the food item is getting preserved because water is a important factor for the growth of microorganisms so by the reduction of water we inhibit the growth of microorganisms so it's really simple so upon smoking also we are going to reduce the amount of water level by that way we can preserve the food item so here this is given minimizing the microbial activity due to chemicals in smoke and removal of water from food due to drying then the next thing is that 
if you take smoke you know that if you breathe smoke it would be very hard to us also right the tears would come your nose will start to run run i mean like you may have a running nose okay definitely muca or mucus will come and uh, cough will also occur right then it's very difficult if you if you like breathe uh, if you breathe smoke for about you know like 30 seconds is enough 10 to 30 seconds is enough you may feel these kinds of complications it's because of that it's because of you know that there are several chemicals contained within the smoke right we learned in the earlier uh, we learned in the earlier lessons we were studying about that chemical processes smoke is getting emitted because of incomplete combustion of a fuel so upon the incomplete combustion carbon monoxide gas unburned carbon particles are getting emitted so these chemicals are pretty much harmful for the living beings so even they harmful even they those things are harmful to us so when these things are come in contact with the microorganisms also these chemicals is going to be lethal for the microorganisms and because of these chemicals my dear children the microorganisms will die okay so that is also one reason for the preservation of food so already the microorganisms which are already within the food is also going to die due to removal of water upon drying with the process of smoking right the growth of microorganisms are also going to reduce new microorganisms will not grow within the food item so by that way we can preserve this food item very well especially we are following especially we are uh, doing a smoking thing or especially we are smoking meat and fish in order to preserve okay we, sm we can smoke uh, fish and meat to preserve you if you if you go to like uh, you know like rajarata area like in anuradhapura pulonnaru those people they make these uh, you know like smoke smoked fish or meat right and even in our traditional vedda people also they make these things right our natives in sri lanka our natives they also do these things especially with the meat my dear children so they can keep this meat for about long time right so smoking can kill microorganisms by using the chemicals contained within the smoke and also it reduces the amount of water through evaporation right so both the factors contribute in inhibiting the growth of microorganisms and to preserve the food item right then so we'll move on to see what is the next method adding chemicals here specially given preservatives so you know that chemical substances are very hazardous to living organisms there are several chemical items which are very dangerous to microorganisms right not even for the microorganisms for us also if you consume those things in high higher concentration then those things will be lethal to even us right so my dear children if you take chemicals chemicals are very hazardous to living organisms there are some certain chemical types which are hazardous to living organisms so preservatives and by adding additives we kill the microorganisms present within the food item right because of these chemicals right because of the chemicals contained within the uh, within the preservatives and the additives that we add okay so once again these chemicals are going to uh, these chemicals are going to i mean like within the food these chemicals are going to last for a longer time so if new microorganisms are going to come 
then they won't be able to survive within that food item because of those chemicals. So by adding chemicals, we can destroy the growth of microorganisms and we can, or we can also destroy the presence, right? We can destroy the presence of microorganisms which are already within the food. So here is given control the control of the growth of microorganisms due to removal of water in food and destruction of microorganisms due to removal of water from them. So here once again by adding chemicals by adding certain chemicals my dear children we can absorb water even okay those chemicals can absorb water those chemicals can remove water from the food item. I'll give you a simple example. If you take salt, salt is a chemical, right? In generally, we refer salt as sodium chloride. That's the chemical name, right? So salt is a chemical. Common salt is a chemical. Sodium chloride goes by the name sodium chloride. So when you add sodium chloride into food, sodium chloride has an ability to absorb water. Okay, salt has an ability to absorb water. So when absorbing water, my dear children, what happens? You know that the growth of microorganisms is going to be reduced, right? It's because water is an important factor for the growth of microorganisms. So these are the ways that we follow in order to preserve food. And the reason behind the preservation, reason behind the preservation process okay how it is getting preserved what is the reason for it so in each of these cases you can clearly understand either we are killing the microorganisms or else we are inhibiting the growth of microorganisms by controlling the factors right by controlling the factors the two factors which are important for the growth of microorganisms are temperature optimum temperature and the moisture or water right sometimes we can do the both process so in that case as my dear children the preservation process is pretty much good we can keep that food item for a longer time period so this is how we preserve food my dear children mainly by controlling factors and by the destruction of microorganisms so in each of these methods in each of these methods as you can see Either we control the growth of microorganisms by controlling the factors favorable for the growth of microorganisms or else we destroy the microorganisms by using different types of additives, chemicals and any other thing. Okay, right. So let's head on to see what are the other contents. So a column is given for extra knowledge, especially this is about the milk products, dairy products. So here is given, liquid milk can be kept longer by pasteurization. In this method, pathogenic bacteria in milk causing diseases are destroyed by heating milk for about 15 seconds. 15 seconds at the temperature of 72 degrees. Right? 72 degrees of Celsius. So here, my dear children, when you take pasteurization, that's a method that we follow to preserve milk or dairy, dairy products, especially milk. Okay, here for about 15 seconds under the temperature of 72 degrees, we maintain the temperature 72 degrees of Celsius, right? We keep the food item under 72 degrees of Celsius. For about 15 seconds very shorter time period but however the temperature is very lethal for the microorganisms okay you know that the microorganisms are growing in room temperature normal room temperature so this is way more beyond that level okay so the growth of microorganisms and also the number of microorganisms contained within the milk also getting destroyed in this process within 15 seconds you know like pathogenic microorganisms are Plenty getting destroyed, right? So, pasteurized milk can be kept for about two weeks in a refrigerator. So, these can be kept for about two weeks, right? 
but however this two weeks condition might change my dear children if you open it okay if you open the container now you know that these things are coming with uh, these thing these things milk especially those things will come within a certain packet or else within a certain bottle so if you open the bottle or packet then this uh, you know like the two week time period may reduce there is a probability but however if you keep the same packaging uh, you know you know like if you keep the same packaging sealed packaging then my dear children you can keep it for about two weeks for sure okay then definitely you can keep it for two weeks for sure so these milk products mainly they are being pasteurized in order to be preserved here we are maintaining a temperature of 72 degrees for about 15 seconds to destroy the pathogenic microorganisms contained within the milk then milk packets you drink have been pasteurized by the subject by subjecting to a temperature as high as 138 degrees of celsius for about one to two seconds so this is also referred as ultra pasteurization milk pasteurized by this method can be kept in refrigerated refrigerators for about two to three months when stored in closed containers so like i said like i said my dear children right so there is another process which is called as the ultra pasteurization so within ultra pasteurization right we heat the milk item or we heat milk even greater than 72 degrees of celsius how much of degrees of celsius it is given here about 138 degrees of celsius 138 degrees of 138 degrees of celsius a pretty much high temperature right very high temperature right so within this temperature my dear children definitely microorganisms are going to be destroyed they won't be able to survive so this process is carried out only for about one to two seconds what is the reason for it because if you heat that thing more than that time period okay if you heat the food item more than that time period then my dear children there is a possibility that you might lose the nutritional level also there is a certain nutritional level within food now so we receive food in order to get that nutrition nutrition is our first and foremost i uh, first and foremost aim of receiving food okay so if you if you are not getting the enough nutritional level then there is no point of using it so if you you know, like if the if this uh, process is going to be continue even more than the relevant time period my dear children then there is a possibility that right then there is a possibility then there is a huge possibility that the nutritional level of the food item will be reduced or it, that nutritional level is getting destroyed that's why even if you take these vegetables special especially greener veg vegetables right most of the times you may see you may have observed or you may have seen that right or you may have heard from magazines or any other method that we do uh, then when you are cooking or when preparing food items when preparing vegetables do not heat it for about you know like longer time period right just keep it simple and cook for about few minutes okay i'm not talking about the food item we need like raw condition right we have to cook it but however when you are cooking vegetables right 
you have to reduce the time period that you are going to cook. Okay, it's essential to reduce the time period. It's because, my dear children, if you heat and boil these vegetables for about longer time, then there is a possibility of destruction of the nutritional level also. Okay, the nutritional level also get it destroyed. So it's a very big advantage, disadvantage, right? It's a very big disadvantage for us. So this thing is going to happen even when the food is getting preserved. We will be discussing those things under the disadvantage of uh, disadvantages of food preservation when you come into that chapter, right? So that's the speciality in here, my dear children. You have to keep up to that time period only, right? Only for about that time period we are hearing this thing. Otherwise, there is a possibility of destruction in nutritional level also. Okay, right. So this ultra past in ultra in ultra pasteurization, my dear children, we heat or we boil this milk products under a temperature of 138 degrees of Celsius for about one to two seconds. This is called as the ultra pasteurization ultra pasteurization so mainly we are doing this thing for these milk packets right milk packets packeted milk items that you drink so those things can be kept for about two to three months but my dear children like i said earlier those should be stored in closed containers if you open these things if you expose these things you know, like few hours, if you expose these things uh, more time period to the environment, then there is a risk. Then you won't be able to keep it for about two to three months. The taste is going to be differ for sure. Okay. So these things should be kept in a closed environment, in a closed container, right? Even though they are ultra pasteurized. You have to keep it in closed environment, right? You have to keep it th keep those things in a closed container in order to be preserved for about two to three months, right? Then the next one, milk available in the market under the name Kalkiri is sterilized milk. During sterilization, all microorganisms are destroyed. In sterilization, milk is heated for about 15 to 20 minutes at the temperature of 120 degrees. This milk is not to be kept in a refrigerator for storage, but once opened, it should be kept in a refrigerator. Right. So the next one is, this is about Kalkiri. So this is called as sterilized milk. So I think within a sterilized milk, my dear children, it is given that during sterilization, all the microorganisms are getting destroyed. All the microorganisms are getting destroyed within sterilization. Means that when you take these bottles, you can keep it for about longer time period. But however, if it is being opened, you know that external microorganisms who are living in the environment, Will definitely come. So if you open it, definitely you have to keep it in the refrigerator, and also you have to uh, you have to consume it quickly, right? You have to consume it quickly. Here, my dear children, see, this is sterilized milk. In sterilized milk, you have to heat the milk item or the milk for about 15 to 20 minutes at the temperature of 120 degrees so this not, this is not need to not this is not needed to be kept in a refrigerator if they are not opened but however when you open it definitely you have to keep it in a refrigerator here all the microorganisms will die all the microorganisms contained within the food item will die okay all the microorganisms contained within the food item will die because we are because in this process we are heating it to a greater time to a greater time period uh, and also with a greater temperature okay right so this is about the milk 
that we consume in our day-to-day -day life, right? About the milk packets and Kalkiri bottles, right? Then, my dear children, we are discussing a fresh new lesson part, okay? Here, mainly we are discussing about or mainly we are focusing about additives, food additives. What are the things that we add to preserve food? not only to preserve to enhance the flavor to enhance the color texture appearance right all of these things can be right enhanced and increased by additives or by using additives so here we mainly we are discussing right what are the main types of additives that we add to food and what are the kinds of additives that we add into food. So here it is given, the chemical substances added to the packaged food in preservation are called additives, right? Additives. So chemical substances, chemical substances added to the packaged food. So especially we are discussing about packaged food items, right? packed food items so like buns butter sausages meatballs each and every packeted item packeted food item at the market right even in the fair in any kind of a place we add additives not actually we but the commercial companies when they are preparing they add additives right so these additives are being added in order to enhance the flavor, taste, appearance, to keep it for a longer time or else for the preservation and there are different other processes, right? So we'll be discussing about what are these additives and what are the types of additives and the examples. So here, first of all, you are given with the type, you are given with the types of additives that we add for the food. First one is thickness. Thickness. Thickness for the thickness, there is an example given pectin, right? Pectin. So, pectin, right, is a thickener. What do you mean by a thickener, my dear children? Thickener means here, you know, like if you take water, the viscosity of water is somewhat less. What do you mean by the viscosity? Viscosity means, you know, like the, it's like not the density, but however, uh, when you take the, uh, we'll see, we, we'll take that like this. When you dip your finger within coconut oil, you can feel that it is somewhat thicker than normal water, right? It's getting, you know, like, it has a, like a sticky kind of a nature as it is very thick. When you dip it in honey, bee honey, it's even more thicker. So that thickness of the liquid can be con is called as the viscosity, right? So pectin is a substance that we add to increase the viscosity or the thickness in liquid. Okay, thickness, thickness. Then the next one, flavors. So you know that the flavors, right? We always find the main factor that we find or that we seek in food items is the flavor, the taste, right? We follow up with the taste all the, all the time. We like to taste good food, okay? We like to taste good food, right? It, uh, you know, like if you take the flavors then, Flavors are going to enhance the taste contained within the food, right? You, I think all of you guys have eaten ice cream, ice packets. You would love to eat them. It's because they have a good flavor, right? It has a good sweet taste. So these sweet tastes are obtained by adding what? Gluso, glucose, or there is another one which is called as saccharine right saccharine 
सेकरेन एंड ग्लूकोज सेकरेन इज ऑल्सो अ टाइप ऑफ लाइक अ शुगर राइट अल्टरनेटिव फॉर शुगर बट हाउ एवर सेकरेन इज समवट समवट डेंजरस ओके एज इट इज अ केमिकल समवट डेंजरस राइट यूजिंग सेकरेन इज इवन प्रोहिबिटेड लाइक इन अवर नॉर्मल इन नॉर्मल कंडीशन राइट पीपल इवन डोंट एट सेकर इन राइट नाउ it's not prohibited actually right uh, there are commercial companies who add is saccharin into uh, ice creams and milk packets and also for the ice packets but however normally right when you take the uh, ice packet things right it's not good to add saccharin my dear children right so sometimes you when you are drinking those ice packets you may have seen that saccharin is not added they are already been printed on the ice packet all even sometimes right so it's because that saccharin is a not good chemical for our body okay saccharin is not a good chemical for our body so glucose and saccharin is also added but however to enhance the flavor within the food right it's not prohibited my dear children but however as a you know, like as a convention people are not using saccharin within these days right as they are harmful to our body if you take it in higher concentration right then next one antioxidants antioxidants so under antioxidants two things are given citric acid and carotene antioxidant means those are the substances right which helps to keep power you know like uh, which helps to destroy toxic substances contained within the food antioxidants okay it helps to destroy toxic substances contained within the food so by that way it helps to protect our body from like you know like poison in the food it can be avoided by you adding antioxidants then preservatives under the preservatives it is given sodium metabisulfite and benzoic acid sodium metabisulfite and benzoic acid preservatives right preservatives so preservatives are the ones you know you know that preservatives in the sense in the name itself right it's going to give you an idea by adding these things we can keep food for about longer time period preservatives right so the colorings next one riboflavin right riboflavin colorings and carotene once again you know what do you mean by a coloring right riboflavin and carotene right so these things are called as colorings we add colorings to enhance the color to show a good look or to enhance the appearance of the food okay to enhance the appearance of the food we add these substances so my dear children all of these contents all of these contents are considered as additives all of these things are added to the food item all of these things are added to the food item in order to enhance the color in order to preserve food item for a longer time period in order to destroy the toxic substances within food in order to enhance the flavor and also in order to change the texture of the food so all of these things not all when you are preparing food items for the certain food, for certain food items we add certain types of additives okay the ones we need will be added sometimes there are food items which or which has all of these items okay so these are the ones which are called as additives my dear children we add additives in order to increase these main things okay in order to increase these main things given under the each topic additives 
write them. So once again given a topic food preservatives. Food preservatives. So substance used to prevent the action of microorganisms causing food spoilage and the effect of other external and internal factors are known as preservatives. Ah, so preservative means a substance used to prevent the action of microorganisms. So this is a substance that can prevent the action of microorganisms. Right? Action of microorganisms can be reduced by adding preservatives. You already know that, right? So here, especially the action of microorganisms who are going to cause the food spoilage is getting reduced. And the effect of other external and internal factors are also getting reduced, my dear children. That helps for the spoilage. So by adding food preservatives, the microorganisms who are going to spoil the food are also going to be destroyed or their growth is getting reduced. And by adding preservatives, other internal and external factors which contribute for the spoilage of food also getting reduced. So this is the main name of adding preservatives. Preservatives are a type of additives. We discussed under earlier lesson part, earlier slide, my dear children. Preservatives are a type of an additive. Preservatives are a type of an additive, right? Then, the code E number is adopted by the European Union to symbolize the food, edit, food editing approved for the use and are experimentally confirmed as safe. So, when you check a packeted food item, if you go for the ingredients column, under the ingredients, you might have observed that there are certain ingredients given out by E number, E201, E209, like that with by using an E number, right? By using an E number, E this much, E this much, like that way, by using an E number, there are certain ingredients which are contained within the food item is given. So those things are, my dear children, these preservatives which are being added to the food substance. Especially if the E number is there, especially if the E number is there, then, right, then it is permitted by the European Union. E, num e represents the European Union. So the European Union have tested this thing and European Union have confirmed that adding this food item or adding this preservative item for the food is safe, right? Experimentally, they have proved it. So that's why that E number comes. So those things are approved preservatives, approved preservatives by the European Union, right? By the European Union. Right. However, my dear children, there is a certain case like this. If you use these things for a longer time period in higher concentration, we don't know whether it is going to harm our body or not. There is a possibility like that. Right. However, according to the permanent, permitted level, if you use that thing only to the permanent, permitted level, the European Union have, have, uh, has been confirmed that there is no risk in taking these uh, preservative items. Okay, that E number, you just go and check a food, packeted food item and check the front page, front paper or front wrap. So by that day, you go for the ingredient column, you check for the ingredients contained within the food item. 
by that way if you can find out an e number thing ah uh, then that is a preservative which is been added to that food item which is approved by the european union right the preservatives from e200 to e299 have been allowed to add to the food as synthetic food preservatives mainly acids and salts can be seen among these so here from e200 to e299 99 right e200 to e299 so the european union have confirmed the safety of these additives okay so these things are allowed to add for the food item as synthetic food additives synthetic means artificial okay synthetic food additives artificial additives okay so mainly these things are acids and salts mainly these things are acids and salts my dear children right so these are the food preservatives especially remember that a preservative is also a type of an additive special type of an additive okay we add preservatives in order to do what in order to prevent the action of microorganisms right which cause the food spoilage and in order to minimize the effect of external and internal factors for the spoilage of food okay we add preservatives in order to control these two factors mainly right then we'll head on to see what are our new things so now we are going to study we are going to take several examples related to preservatives a few chemical substances prescribed to be used as synthetic food additives are given below so these are several synthetic food additives right synthetic food additives number 1 given sodium metabisulfite sodium metabisulfite right sodium metabisulfite the type of a preservative then sodium bisulfite sodium bisulfite then benzoic acid benzoic acid sodium chloride ah, i told you about the sodium chloride thing earlier also it's the common salt sodium nitrite sodium nitrite and sodium nitrate sodium nitrite and sodium nitrate two different chemical substances which has sodium then acetic acid acetic acid is also called as vinegar however this is synthetic vinegar okay synthetic vinegar acetic acid you know like if you take uh, acetic acid and when you add water into it right we can prepare vinegar right vinegar vinegar is you know aqueous acetic acid right water added acetic acid you have to add a good amount of water in order to consume as vinegar okay then the next one the additives mentioned above should be those prescribed by the food act in sri lanka and it is important that they are added in prescribed quantities so like i said my dear children it's pretty much important it's very important right to add these preservatives and additives only for about certain concentration right if these things are added to if these things are added to food only to the permitted concentration then at those instances only these food item be safe to us if the commercial people or if the if the ones who are making these food items are going to add more and more in order to preserve food now the food is getting preserved you know that adding these chemicals 
already going to kill microorganisms and even when the microorganisms are come and going to behave within or come and going to grow within that then because of the presence of chemicals they won't be able to grow so the food item is getting preserved but however if the permitted concentration is not there if the permitted concern if the con concentration is greater than the permitted one then there is a very high risk of getting different kinds of diseases like cancers, kidney diseases and different different other diseases for us. So it's pretty much important to add these things up to the given concentration only. Okay. If not, there can be com complications. So like I said earlier also, Using these preservatives and additives are not that much bad, but however, they should be added to the given concentration and for the given amount only, only to the allowed amount. If you increase that thing, then there is a higher risk of getting several diseases for the people who are going to consume that food item. So, those things are lethal to microorganisms and as well as lethal to other people who are going to consume. Okay. So this is the case in preservatives and additives, my dear children. So most of the companies, sometimes most of the companies, okay, they add their preservatives and other, you know, chemicals to the food in order to keep that food item for a longer time period. But however, their quality is getting reduced and the toxicity of the food item is also getting increased. So there is a higher risk in having non-communicable diseases in our society because of that. Because of mainly consuming packeted food with high amount of additives and preservatives. Right then, so you remember when you are going for a food item, you just check the ingredients and check whether the E number is there. Okay. If you, are, if you are going to buy some certain food item, we check whether the E number is there. So if the E number is there, then those food additives and preservatives have been approved by the European Union, right? So it's okay to consume. Okay then. So the final point is once again given here, you can see any preserved food items that are not suitable for children should be clearly stated in the label. All right. Now, there are some certain food items, right? Especially if you take drinks, right? Especially if you take drinks. Not, I'm not talking about fruit drinks. I'm talking about, you know, like if you take frizzy drinks, there are some certain types of frizzy drinks in our market, okay? In those frizzy drinks, my dear children, sugar is being not added, sugar free. Sometimes there are some certain types of energy drinks in our market. They also like sometimes sugar free and there are some certain things which are added with sugar also. However, if you check it very clearly, there is a certain age limit. Okay, those things are not good for the children. Within the bottle, within the bottle itself, right? They've been marked only for the only for the people who are between this this age or greater than this much of age. Within the bottle itself, they've been print, uh, the, those companies are printing that thing. So it's not good for cons uh, it's not good to consume those things, right? For the children. So if that food item means not good for the children, definitely the companies has a responsibility to print that thing within the label. Okay, so remember any preserved food items that are not suitable for the children should be clearly stated in the label. Right, if you take fizzy drinks, my dear children, right, if you take fizzy drinks, my dear children, then uh, you can observe this thing specially frizzy drinks with no sugar okay frizzy drinks with no sugar
you can observe the you can observe this thing and also in energy rings you can observe this thing okay right then go for the next thing Flay, so for extra knowledge a special kind of a thing given here let's see what is that flavors are added to food such as instant food and soup cubes available in the market but giving flavored food to children under age three years is not safe as far as their health is concerned. Monosodium glutamate, monosodium glutamate, MSG, added to food is a flavor and it is not a preservative. Uh, use of these beyond the prescribed dose is not favorable for health and some food colorings are carcinogenic so what do you mean by this carcinogenic thing it means cancer causative right there are some certain colorings and food uh, preservatives which are carcinogenic or cancer causative so if these things are used beyond right way beyond the prescribed level prescribed dose then my dear children there's a high possibility high probability in getting a cancer like i said earlier not even cancers right those consumption of food items that contains heavy preservatives and uh, you know like heavy additives and colorings okay consumption of those things especially artificial or preserved food item packaged food item consumption of those things in heavy heavy uh, you know like in daily basis right if you are consuming these things daily daily basis like for about you know like if you take for all the three meals you are consuming packaged food items then it is not good means that you are consuming these food items right several times within a day in that case your body is going to receive these additives and preservatives more than the prescribed or prescribed concentration in that case my dear children there is a higher possibility in getting non-communicable diseases non-communicable diseases non-communicable diseases means the diseases which are not getting spreaded okay like diabetes cholesterol high blood pressure in here like cancers so there is a very high probability in getting these things so it's very important to consume food items right especially packeted food items only for about you know like if you take you don't consume those things day in daily basis right try to consume or try to minimize the consumption of these food items my dear children it's very important for our good health right it, it is very much important for the for our good health then one, uh, another thing is given in here about the msg so monosodium glutamate monosodium glutamate is msg so msg is added to the food items to get that special kind of a taste it enhances the taste it has a unique quite unique uh, you know savory taste so if you take savory items like different kinds of biscuits uh, different kinds of you know buy packets right uh, these things are mainly right sometimes for these things msg is been added and soup cube also there are right some types of soup cubes in our market msg is been added thing is in here that consumption of msg is not that much lethal but however if you consume it in daily basis for a for, for a high concentration my dear children then there is a greater risk then there is a greater risk in having you know like cancers and other non-communicable diseases 
they have the, it has a greater risk actually to be honest right there is no there is no direct link between these things nobody have proven that none uh, nobody have proven that consumption of msg is going to create these non non communicable diseases but however even though there is no direct links there are you know like indirect links are plenty there are plenty of indirect links okay there is no direction direct connection between msg and these you know like non communicable diseases but however indirectly these flavors like msg is going to create different kinds of complications within our body if msg is been obtained for about you know like uh, uh, in higher doses in higher concentration sometimes complications like thirsty nausea dizziness may occur okay right so my dear children it's okay to use packeted food item it's okay to use additives and preservatives however main thing that we need to follow is that we have to take these things we have to take these things my dear children up to the prescribed up to the prescribed level okay up to the prescribed level it's not good to use these things in daily basis try to minimize it try to minimize the consumption right always go for the fresh items right always go for the fresh vegetables fresh fruits that's the way of keeping your health and your body safe right my dear children so we have discussed several things related to the preservation of food within this part we specially discuss about the additives right and we discussed about how the food is getting preserved what is the reason behind the preservation or the preserved food item if you are adding these kind of things if you are adding additives or uh, upon following traditional and modern methods how we can save or how we can preserve food like what kind of a thing is is getting controlled over there to preserve food so like that way we discuss several things uh, related to the food, food preservation in here so my dear children in the next chapter we'll be discussing further things related to the food preservation process okay so let's uh, i'm going to meet up you i'm going to meet you with the next chapter and we'll discuss further things with related which is related to the lesson